so dear students today's topic is as i have written here exercise and cardiovascular system now it is a customary to summarize summarize the overall discussion on cardiovascular system with a physiological variation that is exercise so i am just doing that for last 21 classes i have uh, covered uh, not much detail but with a reasonable detail the whole of the cardiovascular system today i am going to summarize some part of it utilizing a standard physiological variation that is known as exercise now first of all what is exercise what is exercise by exercise we have got certain idea that uh, when we are doing some kind of uh, vigorous physical activity uh, either running or jogging or doing some stretching or uh, performing something in our gymnasium gym etc that can be exercise but truly speaking as far as physiology is concerned anything other than resting state is exercise whatever amount of physiology we have taught till date in various under various system say hematology respiratory system gi system so all this system whatever we taught till now everything every discussion was taken to be granted that our physiological system our body system is in a state of rest is in a state of rest is in a state of basal state all the various parameters of physiology all the various numerical expressions of physiology all are uh considered when a person is in a state of rest because rest is resting state is the only uh, constant state resting state is only standardized state where a person can be compared with other person because when i am in a state of activity when some activity is introduced upon rest then whole thing become variable and a person to person variable variability or a person to person difference or variation will not give us the scope to compare between them so whenever we compare the physiological parameters between person to person whenever we say that this parameter is normal this parameter is less this parameter is raised you have to have a same denominator have to have a same denominator and that denominator is in the state of rest so all the parameters which we ordinarily calculate express in terms of certain numerical value are taken to be at rest now anything other than rest is exercise anything other than rest is activity so exercise instead of exercise we can write activity so in physiology anything other than in a state of basal state or in a resting state is exercise now accordingly these exercise leads to increase amount of activity in some or whole part of our body it may be a mild exercise involving a single group of muscle it may be a moderate exercise involving a several group of muscle it may be a jogging or running involving most of the group of muscle it can be a vigorous swimming in the water which involve almost all the group of skeletal muscle so based again so this is one kind of uh, thing that where 
depending upon the amount of involvement of different groups of muscles, we can uh, classify the intensity of exercise or extent of exercise. Another thing may be there, suppose you are doing a single exercise against a, against a simple load or against a heavy load. So based upon the load which we are assigned to overcome during this performance or during this activity, again it will also dictate the intensity of exercise. So depending upon the distribution pattern or amount of exercising muscles, number and extent of exercising muscles, that is one way of exercise classification. There may be other way by means of which we can use the load which against which we are exercising, the load which are uh, assigned to overcome or raise or elevate. That is another way of classifying. So there are plenty of uh, classification framework by which we can classify exercise. That means mild, moderate, severe. So this is a simple kind of classification. Simple kind of classification. There are plenty such classification based upon the heart rate, based upon the blood pressure, based upon many such physiological parameters, based upon multiple parameters and thereby calculating a score. Based upon the, that score, calculated score, one can classify exercise, the intensity of exercise. So in many ways we can classify exercise. A simple way, simple way I can write, it was mentioned in a, a kind of an old book, but still it is quite relevant and it is easy to understand. Say 3 to 8 times of BMR. If our energy requirement or energy expenditure during a particular activity is 3 to 8 times that of BMR, that is the basal metabolic rate, then it constitutes a moderate kind of exercise. This is one kind of classification was given in a, a bit old book of Bell Patterson or Bell Davidson. But that is quite easy to understand by the easy students. So 3 to 8 times that of basal metabolism constituting a moderate exercise. If it is below 3, it is mild exercise. It is above 8, 8 times that of BMR. It is a severe exercise. So this is a kind of classification. So there are plenty such kind of classification. I can just mention one based upon the BMR. That means the energy consumption or energy expenditure. Based upon that, based upon that is one kind of classification. So in that way, there are several kind of classification of exercise. Now there is another aspect of another kind of classification of exercise is based upon the muscle contraction and mu muscle metabolism pattern. Another kind of classification. I told you earlier that there are two distinct types of muscle contraction. One is isotonic contraction, another is isometric contraction. I discussed plenty of times. This is quite elaborately discussed. Isotonic contraction means where the load is trivial and load can be easily uh, overcome. That is isotonic contraction during which muscle length is reduced but muscle tension remains unaltered, isotonic. And there is another kind of contraction that is isometric contraction where load is too much so muscle length cannot be reduced. Instead of that, the muscle tension is raised enormously. That is isometric exercise. So this classification I have told you times and again. But again it becomes, now it becomes relevant. So if we think in some other way, isotonic exercise or isotonic contraction is that kind of contraction during which the muscle tension remains unaltered. So, intramuscular tissue tension remains unaltered. So, blood flow to the muscle remains possible. Because if the tension inside the substance of the muscle is not increased, then blood flow is possible. And the metabolic pattern 
of that kind of muscle contraction would be a kind of pattern known as aerobic pattern. So in case of isotonic kind of contraction as because tension of the muscle is not changed, remains same. So blood flow is possible even during muscular contraction at least to some extent. To some extent blood flow is possible during muscle contraction and ATP can be generated. So this kind of metabolism is aerobic metabolism. In contrary, when a person is doing an isometric exercise, during isometric exercise muscle length is not diminished but muscle tension is increased enormously. So as because intramuscular tissue tension is very high, all the vessels inside the muscle gets compressed, strangulated, closed. Accordingly, muscle does not get much blood flow or any blood flow during the bout of contraction. So during that particular episode of isometric contraction, a isometrically contracting muscle gets hardly any blood or very minimum amount of blood. Then how? They will get ATP. They will get ATP by means of anaerobic metabolism. Or in other words, we can say that isometric contraction is based upon anaerobic metabolism and isotonic contraction is based upon aerobic metabolism. So if we understand this much, then we can extrapolate this conception in our whole body level. Instead of a single muscle, let us extrapolate this conception in whole body level. What is that? Now suppose you are doing such an exercise which is of such an intensity and pattern that all the exercising muscles are receiving its minimum blood supply even during the performance. Or in other words, if you are performing in such an exercise, during that performance, muscles are undertaking an aerobic metabolism. This kind of exercise are popularly known as aerobics or aerobic type of exercise. Or in other words, if you consider another thing, you are performing such an exercise during which, during which muscles become so compressed, so steep, having such an increase in muscular tension, they are not getting enough blood or any blood and during that performance period, they are generating their ATP by anaerobic metabolism. Accordingly, based upon the predominant metabolic pattern of the exercising muscles during the performance of that particular activity, we term those exercises as either aerobic exercise or anaerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise means, again I repeat that they are performing predominantly, most of the muscle groups we are, which are involved in the exercise, they are performing their activity in a state of aerobic metabolism. And in anaerobic metabolism or anaerobic exercise, most of the performing muscle groups, they are performing with respect to the anaerobic metabolism. Now let us give example. As for example, typical aerobic exercise is, typical aerobic exercise is a marathon run. If an elite, elite marathoner, they run for a period of several hours, a 42 kilometer of marathon run, usual marathon run, a full marathon is of 42 kilometer which takes several hours, two and a half hours or three or something like that. If an if a elite marathoner, performs a full marathon run even after the end of performance there is hardly any hardly any oxygen debt there is hardly any oxygen debt 
That means throughout the marathon run, whole of the exercise of 42 km of marathon run is done by a kind of aerobic metabolism. That means whatever requirement of increased requirement of muscles, they are being supplied by adequate blood flow, adequate blood flow, and its increased ATP requirement is perfectly met by increased blood flow. So this kind of exercise is known as aerobic exercise. Typical is marathon run. Now can we give an example of anaerobic exercise? This anaerobic exercise, I can give you a classical example of anaerobic exercise that is 100 meter dash. 100 meter sprint. Say 100 meter sprint when a athlete is performing in a span of say current, current world record is probably 8.8 .8 second. So when a person is performing that exercise say around 9 second, a 100 meter dash, almost full of the exercise is anaerobic in nature because he or she hardly breath and out of these 9 second, initial 1 or 2 second ATP is supplied by stored ATP. Another 1 or 2 second ATP is converted from uh, some pre-ATP substance like creatine, phosphate, etc. But rest of the 6 second out of that 9 second is completely by anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobically developed ATP and thereby at the end of that 100 meter run the person incurs huge oxygen debt, huge oxygen debt and he or she has to respire too much after the performance. So these are the two distinct differences. One is a 42 kilometer marathon run, a typical example of an aerobic exercise. Another is a 9 second sprint, 100 meter sprint, which is a typical example of an anaerobic exercise. And we also term some differently. These aerobic exercises are also sometimes called endurance exercise. Endurance exercise. And this anaerobic exercise, they are sometimes called power gain or power exercise. So 100 meter run, weightlifting, striking the ball hard during a long tennis performance, all these things are example of anaerobic exercise or power exercise. Similarly, 42 kilometer marathon, a jogging, a walking exercise, all these are examples of aerobic exercise. Now, truly speaking, truly speaking, truly speaking, in spite of these two distinct polarized examples, there are plenty of other examples which are a variable combination of aerobic and anaerobic. Variable combination of aerobic and anaerobic. Again, whether an exercise will be a purely aerobic exercise for a particular person will again depend upon that person. Will again depend upon that person. A highly trained individual, a highly trained individual, an elite marathoner may perform an aerobic exercise throughout the period of that 42 kilometer of marathon run. But where is a layman like me, if I try to perform, if I try to perform that kind of exercise, soon it will become, large part it will become anaerobic because I am not that trained. My muscle vascularity has not that adapted, adapted developed, etc. So it is again, whether exercise will be purely aerobic or purely anaerobic, or a mixture of aerobic or anaerobic, how much aerobic or how much anaerobic, all these things again depend upon the degree of fitness, degree of training, degree of development of muscle vascularity, muscle vascular tree, the adaptation at the oxygen extraction level, adaptation at the mitochondrial level, type of muscle fiber, all these things will dictate. You all know there are various types of muscle fiber. Some muscle fibers are called red muscle fiber. Some muscle fibers are called white muscle fiber. White muscle fibers having, having an increased myosin ATPase activity but less muscularity. 
great muscle fibers have got lesser amount of myosin ATPase activity but greater vascularity. So red muscle fibers are typically required for endurance kind of exercise whereas white muscle fibers are typically required for this power kind of exercise or anaerobic kind of exercise. And if we take, we sometimes take, we, we are quite interested in the, uh, in the subject of sports medicine. You may know that in our, uh, in our institute campus, we are soon going to open a, uh, a, 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 a big institute of, on sports science. Within a, within a few months of time, everything has ready and we are going to, soon we are going to open that. Now, so in that exercise physiology and sports medicine center, one of them would be to identify the talents, prospective talents, potential talents of future exercise. Now it is found, if we take a biopsy from our calf muscle, soleus or gastrocnemius muscle, the proportion of red muscle and white muscle is somehow fixed for a particular person. Proportion of red muscle or white muscle for a person is almost fixed. A person having a greater preponderance of red muscle is more suitable for marathon or endurance kind of game. A person having a greater proportion of white muscle fiber will be more suitable for sprint, 100 meter, 200 meter, that kind of power type of exercise. And it is more or less genetically determined. So elite marathoner is really born. One cannot really train to form a train to discover an elite marathoner. Elite marathoner is born by exercise, by training. He or she improves his performance. But an amount of red muscle must be there. Red muscle fiber must be there in order to perform at the level of international elite. Anyway, these are something quite interesting but not strictly in our domain of exercise physiology. So if we return to our discussion that how exercise is being responded by cardiovascular system, the one point I will tell you that cardiovascular system response will also depend upon the type of exercise. If a person is performing a isometric exercise, power gain, cardiovascular system performance is a kind of thing. If a person is performing a endurance exercise or aerobic response will be different. Now I don't have that much amount of time to uh, explain uh, the cardiovascular response to all different kind of exercise. In my class I will today I will uh, just take one example, one illustration of cardiovascular response to a moderate isotonic exercise. Other things you learn yourself and we have got a detailed practical class on exercise physiology. During that class we shall discuss in more detail about the physiological response to exercise. Now for the time being I will take a specific illustration of cardiovascular response to a moderate isotonic exercise. <coughs> so common, commonly done moderate isotonic exercise in our lab setting we use either a bicycle ergometer or a treadmill. When the uh, physiology practical will take place after the onset of this physical class, you must perform all those exercises and we uh, record all the cardiovascular response or not, not only cardiovascular but also the respiratory, cardiorespiratory response. So we expose the uh, subject to either a bicycle ergometer where the load is fixed, amount of work done is predetermined by uh, uh, reasonable adjustment, necessary adjustment of the device and the person that means a student of, of some of your, your batchmate will perform that exercise and some other of you will measure all the possible physiological variables continuously 
during the performance of exercise and throughout during 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 the recovery phase of the exercise now let us see what will happen <coughs> now when a person is exercising the muscle the muscle contraction is the increased muscle contraction Increase muscle contraction means increase nutritional and oxygen need of that muscle. Increase oxygen and nutritional need at the same time increase uh, necessity of uh, uh, of of the uh, metabolic draining out of the metabolic byproduct. So as a whole, there must be increased blood flow to the muscle. so this is the requirement so this is the teleological need and the physiological mechanism will be increase blood flow to the muscle now my question is how the muscle blood flow will increase and from where this increased amount of blood remains available so let us try to understand one by one now increase muscle blood increase blood will be achieved by increasing the cardiac output how the cardiac output will increase cardiac output is increased by increase in venous return and increase in heart rate so as the muscles are contracting they are compressing the veins veins are one way and they are increasing the venous return so venous return depends upon as i have told you earlier muscle pump vessel pump thoracic pump and heart pump so this is the four determinants of venous return so there will be increase muscle pump there will be increase vessel pump there will be increase negative thoracic suction and there is also increase heart pump all these things will increase so the venous return will increase so there is a rise in venous return and also exercise means increase sympathetic activity increase sympathetic activity so heart rate will increase increase sympathetic activity will increase the slope of the pacemaker potential or increase the slope of the diastolic depolarization heart rate will increase and when heart rate will increase heart rate will increase so as a compounding multiplication factor cardiac output will enormously increase So can you tell me what will be the extent of increase in cardiac output? If our normal cardiac output is five liter, if our normal cardiac output is five liter at the time of rest, what may be the cardiac output at the time of a moderate to moderately severe exercise? Any idea? I'm sure you don't have that idea. So it will it may increase up to thirty liter to forty liter. So six to eight times increase in the cardiac output so high liter of cardiac output at the time of rest may even increase up to 30 to 40 liters due to compounding and multiplication effect of increase venous return and increase hr so increase venous return will increase lead to increase venous return will lead to increase in endoastolic ventricular volume increase endoastolic ventricular volume will act as increase free load increase preload will act by frank starling law and by frank starling law it will increase the stroke volume so endoastolic ventricular volume will rise in systolic ventricular volume will fall and stroke volume will rise tremendously so ventricle will contract more ventricle will be evacuated more ventricle will be evacuated more so ventricle will be filled more ventricle will be filled more ventricle will be contracting more and ventricle will be evacuated more accordingly ventricular ejection will be much 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 more so stroke volume will increase so these are all summary what i have told you so increase venous return due to muscle pump vessel pump heart pump thoracic pump increase heart rate due to increase slope of the diastolic depolarization or pacemaker potential so tremendous increase in cardiac output how because there is increase preload 
increase preload means increase activity by starting slow. So decreased ESVB and systolic ventricular volume, the ventricle will be evacuated more as a result of which stroke volume will be enormously increased and cardiac output will increase. So greater amount of cardiac output remains available at the time of exercise. So this is easily understandable. Now the point is, cardiac output will not only increase much, not only increase much, cardiac output will not only increase much, cardiac output will be redistributed. So cardiac output will not only, so this is number one point and second point is redistribution of cardiac output. So there is increased blood coming out of the blood, the heart, and that blood will now be distributed. What is redistribution? When I have described our regional circulation, you could remember I repeatedly shown you a particular table where the quota wise distribution of cardiac output was clearly written how a cardiac output is percentage wise distributed in various organs say kidney is getting 20% etc in that way the table I cannot show you that table you just consult your table and that quota wise distribution of cardiac output at the time of rest was clearly mentioned now at the time of exercise this quota wise percentage quota wise distribution of cardiac output across the body will be changed and it will lead to redistribution. What is redistribution? In one word, this increased cardiac output will mainly enjoy it, mainly channelized to the exercising muscle. This increased amount of cardiac output, the lion's share, lion's share of this increased cardiac output will be taken by the exercising muscle. And the other parts of the relatively inactive part of the body, at least during the exercise, will be deprived, will be deprived. So just try to combine all the conception I have told you for last several days. So ordinarily, our vessels are in a state of Hasomoto tone, I told you. Ordinarily, our vessels, systemic vessels, are in a state of Hasomoto tone. And that Hasomoto tone, that Hasomoto tone or VMT, Hasomoto tone, and that Hasomoto tone is done by sympathetic system. Sympathetic system, because sympathetic supply to the vessel is enormous. So that Hasomoto tone is maintained by sympathetic system. Exercise means increase sympathetic activity. So increased sympathetic activity means increased vasomotor tone. Increased vasomotor tone means decreased blood flow to the organ, individual organ. And that happens. But what is happening in the exercising muscle? In exercising muscle, when the muscles are exercising, there will be metabolic autoregulation. There will be metabolic autoregulation as the muscles are exercising. There will be demand supply inequality. Demand of the muscle is increased, supply is fall off. So increased demand means increased anaerobic metabolism. Increased anaerobic metabolism means increased production of anaerobic metabolites. Increased production of anaerobic metabolite means increased CO2, increased potassium, increased adenosine, increased uh, uh, lactic acid, etc. All their vasodilators chemical vasodilators and they are causing vasodilatation. So this chemically mediated or metabolically mediated local vasodilatation supersedes the systemic vasomotor tone in that particular local exercising muscle. So there is generalized increase in vasomotor tone thereby all the other organs which are not undertaking any part in the exercise they are deprived by vasomotor tone and decrease in blood flow. But the muscles which are exercising, heart which is exercising even during a physical exercise, by chemical mediated vasodilatation, they supersede, 
the effect of vasa motor tone and the blood flow to the muscle is increased not only in the cardiac muscle but all of the exercising muscle blood flow in the muscle is increased during the time of exercise so this is a chemically mediated and this is the major mechanism major mechanism of blood flow increase to the exercising muscle there is another theory there is another theory known as sympathetic vasodilator system it is said that at the onset of exercise at the very onset of exercise it is found very onset of exercise when it was not time to form adequate amount of vasodilator metabolite even before formation of adequate amount of vasodilator metabolite muscle blood flow of the exercising muscle is increased and it was found this is a type of fiber known as cholinergic sympathetic fiber or sympathetic vasodilator fiber some amount of fiber are there in the sympathetic cholinergic fiber or sympathetic vasodilator fiber which is probably probably to some extent responsible for initial uh, increase in blood flow to the exercising muscle but again this theory is not much popular not much Uh, uh, not much strong, not much strong evidence is there in its favor at least in case of human exercise system. So initial, you can just mention initial part of cholinergic vasodilatation or sympathetic vasodilatation, but soon, very soon, the chemical regulation of uh, auto regulation, chemical mediation of auto regulation, or metabolic theory of auto regulation will supervene and will supersede. the sympathetic mediated vasomotor tone at least in the local exercising muscle vascular bed and will cause increased vasodilatation so this is how this this is one way of explaining the vasodilatation or increased blood flow to the muscle so we know if we just in one sentence summary or two sentence summary one sentence is increase blood remains available by increasing the cardiac output due to increase in venous return by muscle pump vessel pump thoracic pump and uh, uh, and uh, uh, muscle pump venous uh, vessel pump thoracic pump and heart pump increase venous return increase heart rate by increasing the slope of the pacemaker potential leading to enormously increase in cardiac output thereby the supply of resource and the accommodation of the resource in the muscle vascular bed by chemical mediated metabolic vasodilatation at the particular muscle vascular bed of exercising muscle so if we understand this if we understand this much the rest part is quite easy now with this backdrop if we try to understand that what will happen to the blood pressure what will happen to the blood pressure of our body systemic arterial blood pressure during exercise it is quite easy to understand so blood pressure means two kind of blood pressure one is systolic blood pressure another is diastolic blood pressure systolic blood pressure means maximum pressure during systole maximum pressure during systole and diastolic blood pressure means minimum pressure during diastole <coughs> systolic blood pressure is by and large a function of heart pump systolic blood pressure is by and large a function of heart pump pumping action of heart and diastolic blood pressure is by and large the function of peripheral resistance amount of vascular space amount of available vascular space in the peripheral circulation so these are the two things systolic blood pressure by and large dependent upon the pumping action of heart and diastolic blood pressure by and large dependent upon the peripheral resistance so what will happen to the blood pressure during exercise now it you can say unambiguously that systolic blood pressure will rise so there must be rise in systolic blood pressure because heart is pumping more heart is pumping more and more and more 
so there will be increase in systolic blood pressure. So systolic blood pressure will rise. What about the diastolic blood pressure? Now, now comes the issue of diastolic blood pressure. So diastolic blood pressure will depend upon the peripheral resistance. Peripheral resistance will depend upon the resistance offered by the overall peripheral circulation. Resistance offered by the overall greater circulation or systemic circulation. And the resistance by and large mainly dependent upon many things but mainly is the radius of the vessel because it is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the radius. So radius is important. So if there is vasoconstriction, the resistance will increase. If there is vasodilatation, the resistance will fall. Now, if we are performing in such an exercise where there is predominantly overall resultant vasoconstriction, overall vasoconstriction, then the diastolic blood pressure will rise. If there is overall vasodilatation, then the diastolic blood pressure will fall. Or if the vasoconstriction effect and vasodilatation effect are balancing each other, then the diastolic blood pressure will remain unaltered. So diastolic blood pressure may either rise or may fall or may remain unaltered. When it will rise? Suppose we are doing a mild exercise. Suppose we are doing a mild exercise or a exercise using a single group of muscle. So as exercise is a sympathetic phenomena, so there will be overall vaso increase in vasomotor tone, overall increase in vasomotor tone, except in this group of muscle, biceps, brachii, and to some extent in brachioradialis, etc., there will be local vasodilatation, chemically mediated local vasodilatation. So, so there will be vasodilatation in this particular bed of muscle blood flow, this particular muscle, but there will be otherwise generalized vasoconstriction. So in case of a mild exercise involving a few group of muscle, one or two group of muscle, the vasodilator effect will be much less than that of the overall vasoconstrictor effect throughout the body. So in that situation, the diastolic blood pressure will rise. Or suppose we are doing a exercise, a severe exercise, where many group of muscles are involved, many group of muscles are involved. Huge number of various groups of muscles are involved. So what will happen? The vasodilatory effect will be more. And vasodilatory effect will overcome the vasoconstrictor effect. So most of the muscle groups are involved. So overall muscle vascular dilatation, but there will be vasoconstriction in the kidney, there is vasoconstriction in the liver, there is vasoconstriction in the mesentery. So there is mesenteric or splanchnic vasoconstriction, hepatic vasoconstriction and renal vasoconstriction. But otherwise, all are vasodilatation. Then what will happen? The diastolic blood pressure will fall. Or if we are doing a kind of a moderate kind of exercise, where vasodilator effect and vasoconstrictor effect are balancing each other, then it will not change. And it is exactly this thing you will observe when you will yourself do this practical using either in either in um, bicycle ergometer or in treadmill, thereby increasing the extent of exercise and gradually you can observe this phenomenon. Observe this phenomenon. So this is a kind of response. So we can easily now if we understand this and if you remember to some extent our my earlier lectures then the rest part is very easy. You just go through the physiological adaptation in exercise from any book. You will understand every bit of it. Every bit of it. It is quite otherwise quite easy to understand the whole. So this is the exercise. Now exercise physiology is a very big chapter. Very, very big chapter. And there are a lot of things are there. But we have got limited amount of time, not much time to discuss much of that here and again in the ambience of this pandemic on this online class all these intricate issues are very difficult to pursue you as far in this situation in this situation so i stop here i stop here i 
uh, I classified exercise in terms of location and severity etc. And what is the response? Especially the most important cardiovascular parameter is blood pressure in a moderately severe or moderate isotonic exercise. So this is the thing. Now what is going to happen in case of isometric exercise and in other kind of exercise? It is your turn to understand that. Your, your assignment to read out from the book and let me know your uh, uh, let, let me know your finding that what happened to our blood pressure system or our cardiovascular blood pressure in terms during the performance of a severe exercise during the performance of a isometric exercise power exercise etc thank you